Good morning, folks. Switcher here. What the Switcher have up the sleeve this morning for you? It's, well, we are going to uh, do an inbox review on the uh, Japanese Navy submarine I-58 from AFV Club. It's 1 in 350 scale. Uh, serial number uh, Sierra Echo 73508. Uh, that is the submarine uh, with cadence. And for those that are not uh, familiar with uh, Catons, uh, that was the uh, man-navigated uh, torpedo. In other words, uh, kamikaze torpedoes. And I'll just give you a little bit of uh, history on uh, the submarine itself, okay? And uh, as you know, um, I have a penchant for uh, things that were rather unique, okay? Weapons of war that were rather unique, uh, I did acquire the I-400 there uh, last year, okay, as a birthday present. I did build uh, this in the 1 in 52 scale, which came up to, uh, there's no video on that, although I, sh I did shoot one. Uh, 59 and a half inches long, it was from Lindbergh. Uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> problems with the kit, uh, fit issues, and so on and so forth, and uh, I required a lot of Tamiya putty, and as you know, Tamiya putty is hard to sand, and da 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 da, da and I just, I just gave up on it, okay? Uh, I put it together in uh, 2014, so I just, it's, I shelled it, and it's going to wind up in the bin. I'm going to take a sledgehammer to it. Although it was an interesting build and all that good stuff, I may not take a sledgehammer. I might just leave it there. It was to go over my fireplace, but uh, this one here, the kit comes in at 12 and a quarter inches, which is a little bit more uh, realistic, okay, for what we do. So a little bit of history. Facing the upcoming Pacific War, the, Internet, uh, the Imperial Japanese Navy proposed a submarine production plan in November of 1941, trying to make up insufficient submarine quantity. The cruiser submarine Type B Mod 2 was built under the said scheme. This class shared the same basic designs with previous Type B, yet with simplified manufacturing procedures. As the war going, production condition was getting critical and material was getting short. In other words, uh, they had uh, basically they were running out of steel. Okay. Uh, type B Mod 2 therefore adopted a lower power engine, which made top surface speed reduced to 17.7 knots from type B, which was 23.6 knots, and submerged speed reduced to 6.5 knots from 8 knots. Well, on the other hand, range was increased because of the larger fuel capacity and lower consumption ratio. In the, in the meantime, due to adopting a different steel material, partial of the shell was made thicker to achieve 100 meters cruise depth as that of the type B. Only three type B Mod 2s rather than 70 original plan were completed. They were the I-54, the 56, and the 58. I built the 56 there in uh, 1 and 72 scale. 58 is uh, what is known as the late version. We're called back to conduct uh, modifications in November 1944. Four Caden torpedoes were settled on the after deck completed in December of 1944. By March 1945, two more Caden torpedoes were settled on the foredeck replacing catapult and aircraft equipment, making up to six Caden man torpedoes on the I-58. In early morning, the 30th of July, 1945, while patrolling on the eastern sea of the Philippines, I-58 shot six regular torpedoes and sank the heavy cruiser USS Indianapolis. This was the last U.S. Navy large ship sunk by the uh, Japanese International uh, Imperial Navy in World War II. The history on uh, the I-50s and all that good stuff is rather sketchy. Uh, I read a book back in mid-70s, okay, and so on and so forth, hence uh, my uh, why I wanted to build this. And um, to my knowledge, uh, there had been no successful attacks with the Catons, okay? Uh, they fired them. There have been a couple of drownings and so on and so forth. But uh, using an actual attack... Uh, the information or the data has not been corroborated for all intents and purposes. Uh, uh, the I-58, okay, class submarine, uh, is not responsible for any sinking of any uh, allied uh, shipping, okay? So without further ado, well, let's look what's in the box. It comes in uh, uh, one of those uh, boxes just like Rebel and all that good stuff, just a cheap cardboard box, but the contents were protected. 
Uh, there's not much with regards to the box art. It's just a repetition of what we have here. So we'll take what's in. It comes with three sprues, a photo etch set, and um, some decals. Uh, this is the second review. I didn't like the first one, so uh, bear with me. And uh, as you know, as usual, I go with uh, the instructions. Uh, we have the history over here, and we're going to zoom in on the instructions there a little bit. Okay, there we go. And uh, as usual, uh, it has a color call out, and it's calling for uh, Hobby Color, Mr. Color, or Mr. Color Spray. Okay, Humbro, Rebel, and Life Color. And uh, we're going to do what we can do. Uh, we have a map list that is totally useless as far as I'm concerned. It's way too small. We can barely see it. But uh, the instructions, uh, submarines are fairly simple. Once you build one, you build them all. Okay. And uh, the booklet is kind of, uh, I'm not quite sure what they're trying to achieve here. But nonetheless, uh, here we go. As usual, okay, yeah, we start off with uh, the lower hull, okay, and uh, putting in the rudder post and so on and so forth. Uh, the few things that are going up forward, okay, um, over here, A1, and we put the four dive planes, uh, a few more little gizmos go into the, the upper hull. They're building up uh, the deck here of the upper hull, putting various components. Uh, this is a, uh, a raised uh, crane attachment. The forward part of the, uh, the deck assembly, and that is that. Then they flip the instructions around, and we go into steps two, threes, and fours, uh, where we finish off the uh, the uh, the after part of the, the the ship, okay, with its rope guards and so on and so forth, okay, to prevent uh, ropes getting in caught in the propeller, okay. We have uh, the assembly of the shafting, the A brackets, and the propellers, and uh, they just continue on, okay, with the rudder and the after dive planes. Uh, then they build up the superstructure here for that's going to accept the uh, the conning tower. Conning tower gets put together, and uh, the various assemblies for on the conning tower is it, is done, and that is basically the build. Then the book flips over to five and six, where they're assembling the periscopes and so on and so forth, and the other uh, accoutrements that are found on the conning tower. And although this is, will not be visible, okay, it does come with a pressure hole. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use that or not because it won't be seen. So it is what it is. And then uh, we flip. And they, and they could have done a better flipping job on that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here we have uh, the assembly. As you can see, got the lower hull here. We got the pressure hull. And we got the upper hull, okay, with its upper deck. And we have our six Caden torpedoes that are fitted on the upper deck. And uh, building of uh, the stand itself. And step number eight is the application of the photo etch. And then we have the color call outs under here. And a grayscale uh, mock-up of uh, where these colors go. And so on and so forth. And that is the build. So on to the plastic itself, we're going to start with um, the upper hull, okay, and uh, as you can see, the, uh, oh, that goddamn camera of mine is still playing, there we go, okay, uh, nice crisp detail, okay, for the various vents and so on and so forth. Um, lighting is not the greatest here. Let's see if we can bring it in. We can see the planking on the upper deck. If I can. Like I said, my camera has been acting up lately. And we're not going to see the planking, but we do have uh, the detail and so on and so forth. There we go. Uh, the lower hull, it's much, much better. Okay, there we see the various panel lines and so on and so forth, and all its, uh, its vents. We have the uh, 
stabilizers over here, our uh, torpedo tubes up front, okay, for regular torpedoes. And uh, the fit of the hull is uh, beautiful. It goes together rather readily. And of course, the water line, okay. Uh, and uh, there we have it. Okay, so won't be too much cleanup to do on there. And it's absolutely uh, wonderful and gives you an idea of where to demark. Uh, uh, there we have it. Where to demark your. Uh, Your whole paint, okay, your foul water paint, okay, and uh, the upper deck. So that is the hull, <clears throat> and uh, here we have the uh, the pressure hull itself. Uh, not much to it, okay. Like I guess it may or may not be used. Uh, although there's uh, no flash uh, on the parts, uh, the parts are rather soft. The detail is rather soft in comparison with the hull. But uh, when we're looking at this scale, uh, it's not surprising. And uh, it is what it is. I mean, I acquired it uh, not for the quality. It, it was hard to, to come by, okay? It's, it's that simple. There's not many, very many of these uh, made or manufacturers that picked up on this. And uh, here we have the, uh, the plate with uh, the Caden torpedoes. And I should be able to, there, there we go, if I can bring my conning tower in. We just got to find out where's, who's who in the zoo. There we go. Okay, and we can see the detail on the conning tower with his various plates and so on and so forth. Uh, we can see the gridding. Uh, this is a, uh, this forward portion of the deck, like on the submarine, is a grill. And that is a steel deck compared to the rest, which is wood. And uh, there's a detail on the uh, the Caton torpedoes. Okay, we got a beautiful nameplate that is going to be able to be painted uh, rather readily. Okay, and one side is in Japanese, and the other side is in English. The we have a photo etch for all the railing. Okay, and there we have it in a few other components, but uh, comes with photo etch. And the decals are uh, very simple. Okay, uh, I'm not sure who made them. Like I said, I had a boo at these uh, before because I didn't like the first review I did. And uh, too much waffling. <laughs> And there we have our decals, just a Japanese flag and the home number. Okay, and as you can see, it was made in Taiwan, okay, in 2010. Uh, not too much reflection on them, and they're within registry, and the carrier film is uh, not overly, it's minimal, okay, for the decal itself, so that is a nice touch. So, um, can't remember what I paid for this. It was uh, rather cheap. Uh, came from uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hong Kong, I think, or some of that, uh, with free shipping and so on and so forth. I think it was about $25 or $30, some of that. So relatively cheap, and if we look at uh, the components, you know, some say, well, there's not a lot of parts for $25, you know, man. Well, I mean, I don't buy stuff for, uh, I don't like enormous parts, okay, like building a muffler, okay, on the... Uh, uh, a draggy tank that takes seven parts, okay, when one could suffice, okay, I'm not into that, some folks are, I'm not, so, so quite a simple build, but uh, I bought it for the significance of the kit, okay, what it meant to me, and uh, that's all I have for now, folks, thanks for watching, uh, Switcher, signing off.